part seven of freedom from Islam. We are looking at uh, renouncing the Shahada. Well, we've considered the list of uh, uh, really spiritual disabilities that are associated with, um, with Islam and they're quite a long list and different people are affected in different ways. So for example, a woman who's lived in an Islamic society might feel very uh, much ashamed of herself as a woman. She might have been taught that, as Wafa Sultan said, I was taught that I was shameful because I was a woman. So that would be a specific issue for her. Um, for someone else, uh, uh, they might experience aggression or violence or anger. So their personal problems could be uh, quite specific, not necessarily the whole shebang. But when we pray for them, we pray through them all. Um, there's also a, a tied up into the Shahada, the confession of faith, are some fundamental um, rejections of the Bible and of Christ. So I've mentioned the psychological impact of the Shahada, but there's also the theological stance towards Jesus. So there's denial that Christ died on the cross. There's denial that Jesus is the Son of God. You could even say there's a hatred of the idea of Jesus as the Son of God. Some people have even um, rewritten the Bibles for Muslims so that Jesus is not called Son of God anymore because there's such an intense uh, hatred of that message. Uh, remember that uh, John has some words about this. We'll come on to that in just a moment. Denial that, um, about the corruption of the Bible. So claims about the corruption of the Bible. That is the claim that the Bible is a corrupted text. And also claims about the future, that Jesus will come back and destroy Christianity. So these are, are really, they're blasphemous claims about the Word of God. So you could say there's a spirit of blasphemy connected to Islam as well. Have a look at what John says. Um, he says, I say this because many deceivers who do not acknowledge Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh have gone out into the world. Any such person is the deceiver and the antichrist. Now when John says Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, he means Jesus, the Son of God, the Word of God from all eternity has come to be among us. And if someone denies Jesus as the Son of God, that's, that's what they're saying. That's what he's saying about them. Or, he speaks about someone who is the Antichrist who denies the Father and the Son, denies the relationship between God the Father and God the Son. So there is in that sense a very deep kind of Antichrist aspect to Muhammad, to the Shahada and all that it represents. There's a, a deep rejection of Jesus as the Son of God, as, as part of Islam. And uh, I, su I suppose if you were to summarize the issues, there's belief in the Quran as the false word of God, uh, the being bonded to the example of Muhammad, which includes the Sharia. There's the rejection of the true word of God, the teachings about Jesus uh, that are true in the scriptures. And there are various curses against apostates and unbelievers that are in the Quran. And uh, they're, they're quite extensive. So you're breaking off curses when you're rejecting the authority of the Shahada. We're going to look at page 109 at the prayers uh, for um, renouncing Islam. And uh, I'd like to take you all through this prayer, and we'll say it together. And you'll notice that it's, uh, I've tried to make it not quite as long as the others, but it's, it's dealing with quite a number of these specific issues. I mentioned Al-Fatiha. This is the prayer that 17 times a day is part of the daily prayers, and it's, uh, because it's so significant, it stands as a representative for many things. Often when you're announcing something, you can have a very specific example that stands for the rest. And Al-Fatiha is, is such a, a very characteristic thing, so I've put that in as well, because it's part of daily ritual. So here we go, let's say this together. I renounce the false submission as taught and demonstrated by Muhammad. I renounce and reject as false the belief that Muhammad is a messenger from God, I reject the claim that the Quran is God's word. I reject and renounce the Shahada and every recitation of it. I renounce saying Al-Fatiha. I renounce its claims that Jews are under the wrath of God and Christians have gone astray. I renounce hatred of the Jews. I reject the claim that they have corrupted the Bible. I reject the claim that God has rejected the Jews and declare it to be a lie. I renounce reciting the Quran and reject its authority over my life. I renounce all false worship based on Muhammad's example. I renounce all the false teachings about God which Muhammad brought and the claim that Allah as betrayed in the Quran is God. 
I renounce my dedication to Islam when I was born and the dedication of my ancestors. I specifically reject and renounce Muhammad's example. I renounce violence, intimidation, hatred, a spirit of offence, deception, rape, hatred, abuse of women, theft and all the sins which Muhammad committed. I reject and renounce shame. I declare that there is no condemnation in Christ Jesus and the blood of Christ cleanses me from all shame. I reject and renounce all fear incited by Islam. I ask God's forgiveness for having entertained fears due to Islam and choose to trust in the God and Father of my Lord Jesus Christ in all things. I seek forgiveness for any and all ungodly deeds I committed because of following Muhammad as a messenger of Allah. I reject and renounce the blasphemous claim that when Jesus returns, he will compel all people on the earth to follow the Sharia of Muhammad. I choose to follow Christ and him alone. I confess that Christ is the Son of God, that he died on the cross for my sins, and was raised from the dead for my salvation. I praise God for the cross of Christ, and I choose to take up my cross and follow him. I confess that Christ is Lord of all. He rules over the heavens and the earth. He is Lord of my life. I confess that he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I cling to Christ and declare that there is no other name in heaven or on earth by which I can be saved. I invite my Father God to give me a new heart, the heart of Christ, to guide me in all I do and say. I reject all false worship and dedicate my body to the worship of the living God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We also have teaching about deception. And, uh, and affirming the scriptures which declare the character of God, that he tells the truth and that we're called to be truthful, and there are prayers renouncing lying and deception. And there's also teaching about superiority, just an explanation of Islam's view of superiority, and uh, the scriptures that explain that if you want to be great, you have to be a servant, that Jesus calls us to serve and not to dominate others. And those important um, passages in the Bible that explain that and the gentleness and humbleness of Christ. And then there's prayers specifically renouncing superiority, which is uh, just a topic all on its own. It's quite important. I thought it was easier to, to break it up. Sometimes when you're taking someone through those prayers, they might begin to, um, to manifest a bit, like there's a particular phrase or a, um, a, a sentence that they have trouble saying, or they might begin to just find it incredibly difficult to say the words. If that's the case, then you, you step back a few steps, uh, get them to affirm their position and authority in Christ. Uh, just find out if the Holy Spirit is revealing anything about that issue, maybe from the past or in their own life. Maybe ask the Lord to speak to them. And then you come again and you work through the prayers and uh, you don't get intimidated. Sometimes um, Satan senses that his power is being undermined and he tries to cause a bit of distraction. So it's important to take your time. That, that's an advantage of doing the prayers with one person, but I've also developed these to do with a whole group of people as well. It's really ideal um, when you're doing this if you have a, a prayer team, team that is trained in this kind of ministry or that it just have a great love and a faith in Jesus that they can pray with an individual. Um, sometimes I've, we've prayed with people and it's just triggered off memories of great trauma, things that have happened to them associated with Islam uh, in the past. Uh, or abuses, like you might be renouncing feelings of inferiority and you suddenly remember all the curses that have been spoken against you when you were younger. So then you might need to backtrack and just pray through a healing of the trauma of those experiences for the person. So it's, um, you can, there's quite a lot that can be done in terms of being sensitive to their specific family history and being ready uh, for these sorts of, sorts of responses. Um, Discipling in means calling people out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God. 
And it's securing people in the kingdom of God. It's giving them their weapons and showing them how to use them, how to hold their ground. It involves a change of their worldview. So the lies that you're used to believing are not true. And you discover they're not true, but then you have to receive the truth and let it form deeply in your heart. You have to find, develop new habits of thought and behavior. So it's a deliberate spiritual intervention. And our intention is to yield absolutely no ground to the enemy, to, to make absolutely no compromise with the evil one. If Islam is intimidated about Jesus being the Son of God, I'm not going to retreat from that. I'm not going to you know, shut up about Jesus being the Son of God because, because some demon doesn't like it, you know, or because Muhammad thought it was bad news. You need to be really strong about the message of Scripture and about the Word of God and confident. Um, you also need to back this sort of ministry up with strong discipling, with ev evidence of the love of Christ and the fruit of the Spirit to confirm people and strengthen them in their identity and in their freedom. So we've been, uh, I'm still having an adventure really with these resources and seeing how they can be used. Um, I really pray that the, the church in the Middle East who are suffering so greatly from Islam would be able to receive a great benefit from these resources. Not that you can make suffering go away by declaring and claiming your freedom, but you can at least live as a free person. Even if your body's being destroyed, uh, you can, you can uh, claim your, your identity in Christ and, and live out your freedom. And that's what the apostles had to do. As I said, 11 out of 12 of them lost their lives for their confession. But the evidence is that they did so with great courage and conviction. And even as we read in the story of Paul, even rejoicing in the face of Satan's strategies. We are living in really exciting times. I think we have an understanding of Islam, a depth of understanding that we've never had before, and there are resources available to the church that have never been available before. And so I'm so pleased to be able to share these important things with you, and I invite you to put them into practice. Please don't hesitate to make contact with me or Salam Ministries if you have feedback or there are resources that you feel could be improved. Uh, we'd love to hear about how this ministry is working and uh, how you're going with it. Thank you very much.